In this message, we draw key insights to the exercise of faith from what Jesus taught us about faith. All right, why don't we rise up to our feet, please. Let's make our declaration this morning and uh, then we will get into God's word together. So if you brought your Bible, hold your Bible high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold and strong. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word. I believe his word. And I live by his word. Christ is my master. And to him, I am in absolute surrender. I advance boldly to take new ground, to extend God's kingdom. I have kingdom power and authority vested in me. The powers of darkness cannot hold me back or pin me down. The forces of the enemy cannot restrain me or contain me. The greater one is in me. God's power through me is more than what the devil can handle. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Why don't you turn around to people next to you, say hello, um, smile, shake, shake hands and greet them. You may be seated, please. Over the last few weeks, we've been studying the subject of faith, and uh, we are going to be on this for uh, quite a few weeks as we continue in the Word of God, just learning, studying, understanding uh, on, on this whole area of faith, of how God wants us to walk by faith, and how he has instructed us to exercise faith in God. And, uh, uh, you know, what we're doing is not something just, uh, okay, go through, some, uh, go through a sermon and you hear a sermon and go away. But it's something that you and I take very personally. And you begin to apply it in your life. Into any area of your life, you begin to apply the word of God. Uh, use your faith in God. Uh, at whatever level you may be, uh, and whatever you may be doing, you may be a college student, you may be uh, in, your, you know, in your first job just after college, or you may be uh, you know, well advanced in years, whatever, but whatever your stage in life is, the word of God can be applied uh, in your life, uh, in the context of what you're going through. So I want you to uh, take these things and uh, begin to apply them. So in the first part of this message in the series, we had, did an introduction to faith. Uh, in part two, we talked about God's sovereignty, grace, and faith. How do these interplay? How do these interwork? Uh, there is God who is sovereign, uh, and there is this whole aspect of grace, and then there is faith. How do these interplay? And we just summarized it in a statement like this. We said, you know what, while God may do things sovereignly, the norm is that God wants us to receive by faith what he freely gives to us by grace. That's the norm, that we receive by faith what he freely gives to us out of his abundant grace. And that's how we should walk uh, in our journey with God. Last Sunday, uh, Pastor Nancy ministered, we, uh, we heard about faith and the ministry of Jesus. So we uh, looked at the ministry of Jesus and how he interacted with people around this whole issue of faith. Now, Jesus is the greatest teacher on the subject of faith. Now you go to him. He taught us about faith. So you go to him if you want to learn about faith. And that's why last Sunday we examined how did he interact with people? How did he minister to people in his ministry? What role did faith play? Today, we want to build up on that and we want to just look, we want to look directly at Jesus' teaching on faith. What did he say? What were his words on the subject? 
what did he teach his disciples and people who came to him? What did he tell them concerning this whole issue of faith and how they could have faith in God? So we want to look at his teaching on faith. Now, as we actually go through this message, one of the things you and I will be challenged with is, oh no, this is so unreal. <laughs> Everything Jesus is saying, it's, it's not practical. It doesn't work in real life. Uh, because uh, the things you hear him say, when you, when you and I, when we try to see how, you know, what our experience is or what other people have gone through, uh, we find a big mismatch or we find a big gap between the things Jesus has said and the facts and experiences of life. So we have this dilemma of truth versus fact and experience. Now, the wrong thing to do is to try and modify the truth so that it can accommodate our experience. We don't have, that is not the right thing to do. We do not have the right to modify truths to accommodate facts or experiences that are contradictory to the truth. What we must do is to pray and ask God and seek God's help that as we journey with God, that our level of experience can be elevated to the level of God's truth. Are you with me? In fact, that's the only option. There is no other option. The only option we have is God, as I walk with you, as I journey with you, as I grow in my walk with you. I want the level of my experience elevated, raised up to the level of your truth so that what is ideal and real will be at the same level. Match. But we don't have the option of trying to modify the truth. That's wrong. Are you with me? So as we go through this, this whole, what did Jesus teach with faith? And we go through it. Uh, yes, you know, we are going to be confronted with, but this was what my experience has been. This is what somebody else's experience has been. Uh, these are the facts that, are, that I'm facing right now. It doesn't match up with what Jesus said, but the only option is God change my experience. Bring it up to the level of your truth. Amen. So what did Jesus teach us about faith? We summarized this in simple statements that uh, uh, we can uh, uh, hopefully remember. Uh, and we try to condense or condense his teaching uh, in these statements. And I'll make, we'll go through these. Number one, what Jesus taught us concerning faith, he said is all things are possible through faith. And, and again, we will look at scriptures that where Jesus spoke these things. And I'll go, them, go to them very quickly. In Matthew 17, 20, Jesus said, If you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move and it will move. And what did he say? Nothing will be impossible to you. Or in Mark 9, verse 23, Jesus said, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, these are the words of Jesus. We can't change that. We don't have the option of changing it. You can't make all as some. That's not an option. All means all. All things are possible to him who believes. He said, nothing shall be impossible to you. So within the boundaries of where we operate in faith, within the perimeters, this is the rule. This is what Jesus said, all things are possible. So when you and I confront situations in life, this is how we have to approach it. Jesus said, all things are possible. Nothing is impossible. So you don't limit yourself or you don't limit what God can do to you. The other thing I want to point out is this comparison Jesus made. He said, a mustard seed can move a mountain. Now think about that comparison. He said, if you have faith... As a mustard seed. This mountain can be moved. Meaning something big, huge, insurmountable can be taken out of your way. If you have a mustard seed size of faith. Now, you say, well, how is it? Now, this is not to glorify faith. But the fact is this. That, it, that, that mustard seed size of faith is sufficient for almighty God to move into your situation. See, he's not asking you for a big door to come in. He's not asking you for a window. All he's asking you and me is a mustard seed sized faith. That's all he says. If you have that faith, that's enough for almighty God to come into your life. And so now the mountain has to deal with God. Almighty God. 
And the mountain has no choice. But all you and I need is a mustard seed size of faith for, to give God the entrance into our situation. Entrance into our circumstance. That's why he says, if you have faith as a mustard seed. Remember, faith connects us with God. Then God comes in. And that mountain cannot stand in your way. All things are possible to him who believes. Number two, we will receive according to our faith. Jesus taught us that. You will receive according to your faith. This is law, meaning nobody can hold back or deny your faith. For instance, to the Roman centurion, Matthew 8, 13, Jesus said, go your way as you have believed, it will be done for you. As you have believed. It will be done. That's what Jesus said. He didn't tell the sanctuary, you know, just go home. You have faith. Uh, let's see if it works out or not. <laughs> that, that, that's, not the, that's not the language he used. That's not what he spoke. He said, as you have believed, it will be done. Out to the blind man who came to him in Matthew 9, verse 29. He asked them, do you believe that I'm able to do this? And they said, yes, Lord. And he responded to them in verse 29. According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith, it will be done for you. That is law. It's law in the realm of the spirit. Nothing can deny your faith. According to your faith, it will be done. So when you set to use your faith on a situation or circumstance, that's how you should approach. Uh, it's not like, well, I'm going to press this button. If, you know, if it works, it works. It's great. If it doesn't work, I'll figure another way out. No, that's not the way we exercise faith. We exercise faith in accordance to what he taught us. He said, according to your faith, it will be done. So I'm going to confront this situation with my faith in God and it will be done according to the faith that I'm bringing in to the situation. Amen? The third thing Jesus talked to us about faith is this. Our will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. You see, Many of us uh, have been taught or uh, because of the environment in which we've grown up, we've been accustomed to praying like this, God, if it is your will, give it to me. But that is not the way Jesus taught us to exercise faith. In the exercise of faith, your will, your desire must be set in stone, so to speak. It must be set and said, God, this is what I want. And this is what I will have. Your will and desire is involved in the exercise of faith. Look at some examples in, in, in the Gospels. In Matthew 15 and verse 28, when the woman of Canaan comes to Jesus, she receives from the Lord. This is how he responds to her in verse 28. He says, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you, or the next few words, as who? You desire let it be to you as you desire or the king james says be it unto you as you will meaning as you have willed in this situation you come to receive so he says great is your faith let it be to you as you desire so your will is involved your desire is involved in the whole process of exercising faith or in mark 10 verses 51 to 52 you have jairus uh, he, he hears Jesus passing by. He cries out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, uh, immediately the crowds tell him, keep quiet, you know. But he cries out all the more. And so Jesus stops. And what? And just, uh, you know, bring him here. And they say, hey, hey, master is calling, go. So they bring him to Jesus. And you know what the question Jesus asks him, verse 51? What? Read it with me. What? Do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? Now, some of us may have responded, Lord, anything, Lord. How absurd that is. Anything. I am blind, but anything you want, you give. No. What do you want me to do for you? Meaning, Jesus says, you tell me, your desire is involved. Your willingness is involved in this whole thing. What do you want me to do for you? Anything is not an acceptable answer. 
What do you want me to do for you? And his answer is very clear. Lord, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus' response follows that. He says, go your way. Your faith has saved you, healed you. You see, his faith was involved and his desire was involved. What you want it was connected to his faith. Are you seeing that? It's not like God, whatever you want to give, give. No. What do you want that's connected to your faith? And he says, oh, go your way. Your faith has saved you. And he received his sight. Or in Mark 11 verse 24, in teaching about prayer and believing prayer, Jesus says, what things you ask. The King James says, whatever you desire when you pray. So you ha- your desire is involved if you have to exercise faith. Or John 15 verse 7, Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Let's read the next few words together. You will ask what you desire. You ask what you desire. So your desire, will is involved in this whole thing of exercising faith in God. So we've got to be determined. Now, uh, uh, let's, let's address two common objections to this whole thing. The first thing people will say is, but didn't Jesus they teach us to pray in the Lord's prayer? What did he tell us? Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Didn't he tell us to pray like that? But now you're telling us my will is also involved. Yeah, but who's doing the praying? You are praying. So your will is that God's kingdom come. Your desire is his kingdom come. Your desire is his will be done. So big question, what is God's will? I'm saying this in jest, but sometimes we are, all of us are seeking God's will. As the God lost his will somewhere. (laughs) Like man, God lost his will. I'm searching. Listen, the will of God is very simple. Number one. God's will is always consistent with God's nature. If you know the nature of God, you know the will of God. What is God's nature? He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. None of us will go to the doctor expecting to, you know, uh, he's a doctor, I'm going to him, but I think he's going to make me worse. None of us would do that. But why is it when we go to God, he said he is Jehovah Rapha, but we go, oh God, if it be your will. He already told you he is the doctor. Do you go to the doctor and say, doctor, if you're in a good mood today, get me better. (laughs) No, we go to the doctor with one expectation. He's going to help me get better. Why can't it be the same way with God when he said, I am Jehovah Rafa, there is no question whether God wants to heal you or not. He revealed his nature to you. In fact, it is wrong to make statements that oppose his nature. He said, I am Jehovah Rapha. He didn't say 50% Jehovah Rapha, 50% Jehovah sickness maker. <laughs> Nothing like that. So God's will is always consistent with the nature of God. If you know the nature of God, he's revealed his nature through his covenant names. So every covenant name reveals a certain aspect of the nature of God. He said, I am Jehovah Jireh. It's God's will to provide. He said, I am uh, you know, Jehovah Nishi, the Lord to victory. The Lord who grants victory. That's his nature. That's his will. Secondly, God's will is always consistent with his word. It's, it's revealed in his word. If you know the word, that's his will. Because he's spoken it. That's his will. So you find it in the Bible. That's his will. His word is his will. Third, God's will is revealed or expressed through his promises. The reason he promised it is because he willed for you to have it. Otherwise, he would not have promised it. Is that right? So there's, there, is, is, is it promised in the word? Then it's his will. There's no need to pray about it. He said it there. I promise you this. So the will of God is not something that is so mysterious. You and I do not understand. It's the nature of God. It's revealed in the word of God and it's expressed by the promise of God. That's his will. And that's what we are supposed to pray. God, I want to see that established here on earth as it is in heaven. The second objection people may have in uh, praying the way, you know, what, what we just said that your desire and will is involved in the exercise of faith is, but didn't Jesus also pray? Father, not my will, but thy will be done. 
Didn't Jesus also pray like that? He said, yeah, he did. But remember this. He lived his entire life in subjection to the will of the Father. He walked like that. So this prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane, there's only one recorded time in the entire record of Jesus' life that he prayed in this manner, if it be thy will. And what was that prayer? That was a prayer expressing his submission, something he was already walking in, expressing his willingness to go to the cross. That was all. But you never find Jesus praying, Father, here are these people so hungry, there are five loaves and two fish. If it be that I will multiply them, otherwise let them go hungry. You never find him praying like that. You never find him praying, Lord, Father, here is the water pot, uh, here is water. If it be that I will turn it into wine, otherwise we'll serve them water. You don't find him praying that way. You don't find him praying for a sick man saying, Father, if it be that I will heal him, otherwise take him. <laughs> you don't find Jesus pray like that. Why? Because he knew the will of the Father. The will of God is consistent with the nature of God, with the word of God, with the promise of God. So there was no question of praying for the will. You enforce the will. Be healed. That's the will of the Father. Come out. That's the will of the Father. For people to be set free from demons. Are you understanding? The only time we have a record of him praying, if it be thy will, is in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he's expressing his yieldedness, which he already walked in the entirety of his life. He was expressing his yieldedness to going to the cross. Uh, a prayer of surrender. But when it came to enforcing God's kingdom on the earth, there was no, no question about the will of God. It was already known. He was enforcing the will of the Father here on earth. So now, the fourth thing Jesus taught us about prayer of faith is that faith is key to seeing the glory of God revealed, or glory, the God's glory manifested. Jesus said in John 11, he told Mary and Martha, he said, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. If you believe, you have faith, you will see the glory of God. What is the glory of God? The glory is a visible expression in our realm of who God is and what he does. So God's nature and God's works are manifested, made visible in our realm. That's what the Bible calls as the glory of God. So here Jesus is saying, if you have faith, you will actually see a manifestation, a demonstration of the nature of God and the works of God in your life. You will see it. So faith is key to seeing God at work in our lives. Are you with me so far? Number five. When, going, when things go from bad to worse, only believe. We saw this last Sunday as well. When things went from bad to worse, take the case of Jairus. Jesus is walking with Jairus' home. Jairus said, my daughter is really sick. Please come and heal her. So Jesus is going. And on the way, he gets the news. Things have gone bad. They will become worse. Your daughter is dead. What did Jesus respond? Jairus, why didn't you come to me yesterday? No. He tells Jairus immediately, fear not, only believe. Same thing with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. You know, Jesus has come there, it's now four days, and Martha has tried to tell Jesus, and Jesus has moved the stone. Martha is trying to explain to Jesus, Jesus, he's been dead four days, it's really bad, uh, things are bad. How does Jesus respond? Oh yeah, Martha, I think things are really bad. Let's not do anything. No. He says, Martha, did I not tell you, if you will believe, you will see the glory of God. I want to ask you a question. If Jesus was here today, 21st century, do you think he would say anything different? He say, oh man, this is 21st century, so I need to modify my theology a little bit. Maybe he would use a little different language. He, instead of saying, fear not, only believe, he might say, guys, chill, have faith. <laughs> <You know? laughs> His language may be a little different. But the message will be the same. Fear not, only believe. 
message is still the same. So when things go from bad to worse, what should our response be when we want to be people of faith? Just this. Fear not, only believe. There's no other option. He didn't give Jairus an option. He didn't give Martha and Mary an option. He said, fear not, only believe. Believe and you will see the glory of God. Nothing else. Number six. Jesus taught us that faith is released through, um, through words spoken out of a believing heart. He taught us that. And you find this in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And we may just reference one or two. In Matthew 17, 20, he said, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, what will you do? You will say. You will speak to the mountain. Mark 11, 22 and 23, Jesus said, have faith in God. Verse 23, he said, surely I say to you, Whoever says to the mountain, be removed and be cast in the sea. And does not doubt in his heart. But believes that what he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. So Jesus taught us this. That if you want to release your faith, you speak words out of the heart of faith. Out of a believing heart. So that's why we encourage you to speak. So maybe, you know, you go to your office. And something is happening in your... You think, so, boss, I need a... I'll just be right back. Okay, go to, the, go to the restroom, lock the door, and you speak. Now don't shout. <laughs> but you speak. You say, in Jesus' name, I take authority over the situation. I take authority of the confusion. I take authority of what was, you know, troubling. And I command peace. Didn't Jesus speak to the storm? Didn't he speak to the winds and the waves? So we saw from last Sunday, you and I can speak over the situation, circumstance, inanimate things, things in our life. So you speak. If there are situations in your home, speak over that circumstance. Speak over that situation. Jesus said you could speak to a mountain. A mountain is an inanimate thing. So you speak. If there's confusion in, in, in relationships, if there's confusion in your home, uh, if there's a financial need, you speak over that area. You say, in Jesus' name, I speak over the finances needed for this situation. I command the release of that money. Now, don't worry how that money is going to come. He didn't tell us to do that. He told us to speak what we believe. Are you with me? You don't have to shout. You can just speak. Speak over the situation. Speak over the circumstance. Speak over your body. Jesus spoke to bodies. He said, be open. Eyes, oh, be open. Mouth, speak. He spoke to the body. Are you with me? He told us to exercise faith. Maybe some of you, the rest of you, I don't know. <laughs> Number seven. Faith is exercised in prayer by believing you have received when you pray. So what did Jesus say? Mark eleven twenty four. 24. He says, when you pray, whatever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have received and you will have it. Believe that you have received. Now how can I believe that I have received? Faith is the evidence of things not seen. That means in the realm of the spirit, as I pray before God, God, I believe it is done. I receive. That's what he told us. He said, when you pray, believe that you have received. Then you will have it. It will come to pass. So you believe that you receive, then you will have. Now, that whole process of believing that you receive may take you a few times to pray. It's okay if you pray a couple of times. But you're, you need to arrive at that place where when you pray, you believe that you have received. You have received. Now he says, you will have. You will receive it in the natural. That's how we pray. It's not a prayer where you're hoping, oh, it's always out in the future. No. You pray, I have received it now. I believe I have received it now. So it's not like, oh God, sometime in the future it will happen. No. You believe that you have received. And you will have. Number eight. Faith must be acted upon. We saw this again last Sunday. So Jesus told people, he said, act your faith. 
to the man on the stretcher. He saw their faith, but the next thing he said was, arise, take your beds. Now, what if that man had said, Jesus, I've been in this place for 15 years. You're telling me something absurd. You're telling me to rise up. I've been here 15 years, laid down. But Jesus was saying, arise, take up your bed. Do something. Act your faith. So you can imagine, and I'm just imagining this. This man, this paralytic, lying on the bed, paralyzed man, having heard Jesus say, take your bed. He must have first said, let me see if I can move my hands. You know, oh yeah, I can move my hand. Maybe this hand. Oh, I, let me try and sit up. Oh, I can. Now let me try to move my legs. Oh, I can. You see, and in that process of acting f- his faith out, his healing came into his body. Now, I don't know at what point, but he acted his faith and he was healed. He got up and he took his stretcher home that day. So Jesus taught us, act your faith. For Peter, Peter said, Lord, if it's you who's coming on the water, uh, tell me to come to you. He said, come. Now, Peter may have been about to step out on the, on the water and Andrew, Peter, remember, normal men don't walk on water. <laughs> John on the other side. No, no, Thomas, Thomas. <laughs> you know, Peter, are you sure you heard the Lord? Is that the Lord who told you to come? John, Peter, the waves are much higher than you, Peter. So I don't know what his friends in the boat could have been talking to him, but Peter had to step out of the boat to walk on the water. But the promise or the word was already given, come. Come. But he had to take that step. And when he did, he actually walked on the water to Jesus. Number nine, Jesus taught us that there are different levels of faith. You find him in the gospels. At some point he says, how is it that you have no faith? And other times he tells his disciples, oh you of little faith. And then to some people he says, You have great faith. So he identified different levels of faith. And I'm bringing this out just to encourage us saying that, look, we can grow in our faith. We can, you know, imagine that little faith was not even the size of a mustard seed. It's not even the size of a mustard seed. That's how little it must have been. But we can grow in our levels of faith and increase in our faith in God. And and we will talk about how to develop that in, in the coming weeks. And last one. Jesus taught us, and I I may not be able to read all the scriptures on this, but Jesus taught us that worry, fear, and doubt negate faith. Worry, fear, and doubt. They negate our faith. So remember, when worry, fear, and doubt come knocking at the door, send faith to answer. Amen? Amen? What is on the door? Faith answers. Fear is at the door? Faith answers. Doubt is at the door? Faith answers. Now think about this. Worry is you and me trying to solve problems that, you know, we think God can't handle. I need to help him. That's worry. You saying, God, I, I just think you can't handle it. You need my help. That's what worry is. Fear is making the circumstances and situations appear bigger than God. That's fear. And doubt is thinking that God will fail his word or fail you. The Bible says God's faithfulness is so great. He watches over his word to perform it. So, worry, fear and doubt. No place in our lives. Amen. God has called us to walk by faith. That means, as we saw earlier, everything we think, say, and do must originate out of faith in God. Amen. So I want you to take these statements. We've tried to encapsulate 
uh, the essence of Jesus' teaching on faith. Now, of course, you could go and read the Gospels and, and look at everything Jesus said about faith. But we try to just capture uh, in these 10 statements the essence of what Jesus taught concerning faith. And so I want to encourage you to just, uh, you know, renew and um, Put within your heart. Just make it a part of you. Make these teachings of Jesus a part of you. This is what Jesus taught concerning faith. This is how I'm going to walk in faith. I'm going to grow in this until the level of my experience comes to the level of his truth. Amen. And then one day we will be walking at the level that he said you and I can walk in. It will be normal for us to see mountains move and storms come and water turn to wine and... Uh, 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 <laughs> bread and loaves multiplied. It'll be normal for us to see the works of God, to see the glory of God manifested. Amen? But let's keep journeying. Let's keep our eyes on the truth he spoke and say, God, that's what I want. So whatever situation in your life is right now and the challenge, uh, area of challenge, whatever it is, Use your faith because we are to walk by faith. That means everything you speak, say, and do, let it originate out of your faith in God. As you handle that matter, maybe it's in your workplace, maybe it's in your school, your college, uh, maybe it's a, a health issue, maybe it's a financial matter, uh, whatever it is, operate out of your faith in God. Act on these things we've learned from the word. Use your faith in those circumstances. And remember, if you have faith, even as a mustard seed, that's Big enough for God to move in to your life situation on your behalf. That's all he's saying. I remind myself many times, Jesus is the author and finisher of my faith. He's the author and finisher of my faith. So I don't have to worry about that faith thing. I just say, Lord, I give the faith I have to you. Now move into my situation. Move in this situation. Just a mustard seed is all he needs to be able to come in to our life situation and work. Amen. Let's rise to our feet, please. We've got to get ready to close. And I want you to take a few moments just to pray over the things you've heard this morning. Apply them in your own life. Apply them to your own life. And say, God, this is a situation where I can use my faith. And there's an area where I'm going to use faith, my faith, to deal with. I'm going to handle that matter. Out of faith in God. Rather than worrying or letting fear or doubt come in. I'm going to use my faith. Maybe you can. Take a few moments to pray please. Before we close. Lord we just acknowledge. Your word. Your truth. All things are possible. To him who believes. Jesus, you said nothing will be impossible to you. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed. Father, I just stand in agreement with people as they pray for their situations in their workplace. That they will see you move in those situations. The way there is confusion and disagreements and Lord, let there be peace and good understanding coming in. Where there are financial needs, I pray that there will be supernatural provision coming in. As people look to you, give you their mustard seed sized faith. Let supernatural provision come in. Let healings take place. 
in bodies. As people look to you for healing. Let ailments and infirmities, diseases be completely removed because of faith in you. We thank you, O oh God. We honor you. Thank you. Before we close this morning, I just want to give an opportunity for anyone here. You have never received Jesus Christ into your life. You've not been born again. Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The Bible says, as many as who received him, to them he gave them the right to become children of God. So with anyone here this morning, you're not sure you're born again, you're not sure you've received Jesus Christ into your life, I want to lead you in a simple prayer that you can do it this morning before we close. You can just pray this prayer with me if you've never done this before. Lord Jesus, I receive you into my life. Forgive my sins. Make me a child of God. And help me to live for you the rest of my life. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Anybody here this morning, you prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. I just want to see our hands so we could celebrate with you. You prayed this prayer with me for the very first time. Just raise your hand. We just want to, God bless you. Anybody else? God bless you. Anybody else? Just hold your hand up. We'll have a greet. Uh, our greeters will come and give you a bag. We have a special gift bag to give to you. Anybody else? I didn't see up in the balcony, but if there are any hands raised up in the balcony, um, just keep your hand raised up so that we can make sure we get this bag to you. Uh, uh, there are some resources in that bag that you could use. There's a card there. If you write your name and number and hand it back to our greeters, somebody from the church office will call you and will just guide you through how you can use uh, the resources in the bag. Let's just close in prayer as, and we will dismiss. Father, Thank you for this morning. Thank you for the truth we received. I pray that each of us will be empowered to walk in truth, walk in your word, and walk in faith. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit be with each of us always. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a good Sunday. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We would love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.